Hello and welcome. Today's video is all about the details of how I installed the rooftop solar array on my Lance 2185 travel trailer. If you're interested in the why behind it and also just the overarching view uh, behind the whole trailer and all the modifications that I made, then click on this card right here above and that will take you to the, my overview video. So let's get started. When we purchased our travel trailer, it came with this solar panel already installed on it. I don't know if this was from Lance or from the dealership, but I'm guessing from the dealership. And you can see that they installed it right between the TV antenna and the rooftop air conditioner. And as you can see, the, the way the angle of the sun is right here, how the trailer's parked, there's a big shadow being cast on the solar array. In our boondocking video, when we went to Goblin Valley, which I'll link to above, I found that this actually diminished the solar output by about 75% and I took off the, the top of the TV antenna on that trip, and then our production jumped up to eight amps where it had been two amps previously, about. In any case, that was woefully inadequate for what I was trying to do with the trailer. And uh, there are a number of rooftop obstructions up there just like there are on any travel trailer. So I decided to do the uh, Unistrut method that I've seen others do online where they basically just raise up the solar panels high enough to get over the top of all the rooftop obstructions. Now, the tallest object on the roof of our RV is the rooftop air conditioner, and that is about 14 inches high. I, I could have gone over the top of that, but the thing is, is that unit is already super inefficient. And so I wanted to replace it with a more efficient unit anyway, plus it can only cool. And I wanted to be able to heat and cool with electricity. So my overarching plan was to remove that rooftop air conditioner, just install a ceiling vent there in its place just to fill the hole and give us the additional functionality of another fan, and then to install a heat pump mini split system. And I'll be getting into the installation of that uh, mini split system probably in my next video. I measured the height of all of the other obstructions on the roof as well as the vents when they are open and I found that about nine inches high was sufficient to make everything still function just fine and uh, have enough clearance for uh, them to still open and air to pass through the vents and stuff like that. And uh, I m measured also the distance of, of different things on the roof and, and like where I could potentially fit solar panels and I was trying to see if maybe I could utilize the luggage rails, the cross rails that are up there. And I quickly decided that those were not gonna be helpful. After looking at all of the possibilities, I could see that there were two clear paths straight down the length of the roof. On the left side, it was really tight tolerances between the bathroom plumbing vent and the skylight and the, and the vent, uh, but it, it was there, it, it could work. And so I had seen plans of other people online where they had mounted their solar panels up higher using Unistrut, and I'd seen various methods of that. But I decided I would use Unistrut as the base end of the upper layer. And so basically I would have a sandwich Unistrut with some risers in between them to get to the correct height. I measured all the things, made sure it would all work, and then began to make the modifications of taking off the rooftop air conditioner and things like that. Incidentally, I weighed the luggage cross rails and they were surprisingly heavy at 28 pounds. Uh, it's aluminum Unistrut, so it's much, much lighter than steel and more expensive <laughs> correspondingly. And uh, so then I worked on bolting those channels together. And of course the kids wanted to help uh, with arranging the bolts and things. And uh, that was fun for them to do. By this point in the project, I had figured out what solar panels I was going to order and I got them ordered and it took a while, but they eventually arrived and they arrived as a full-on 18-wheeler semi-truck in front of my house and unloaded them. And I checked them for damage and then unpackaged them and tried a test fit on the racking that I was building next to the trailer. And I got the Unistrut bolted together and lifted it up onto the roof of the RV. And as you can see, it barely fits straight down the length, but barely is good enough in this case. And uh, I weighed these uh, Unistrut um, channels and they came in at 34.6 pounds each side. So double that is the, the weight of the racking up there, at least the core components of the racking. There was a little bit of additional Unistrut that I added as well. I contacted Lance and I did get the schematics of the RV from them where the roof trusses were and I had measured them out and even used like an infrared camera to see for sure where they were. And, but I, I didn't really want to drill into my roof if I didn't entirely have to. And I had seen plans of other people online 
that had successfully used very high bond or, or VHB tape from 3M to affix their racking to the roof. And so I looked into that further and decided to go with that route first. And then if there were any indications of looseness or not being strong enough, then I would bolt it down. And so I got the 3M tape and I put out strips of it on the roof with periodic gaps so that water could get past and underneath the racking. And so I put down that 3M tape across the length of it and also made sure to clean the surface before doing so and then duck the uh, unistrut on. And it worked perfect and I went up and down standing on them and making sure that they were well stuck down. Then I continued to add reinforcement of some additional cross spacing of unistrut that is bolted to the side luggage rails. And then in addition to that, I also attached with cables to those side rails at four different points because obviously when you're traveling down the road the front of the solar panels are getting the brunt of the upward force of wind coming up over the front cap of the trailer so I wanted to make sure that that was very firmly held down and so by the time I was done attaching all of these bolts and the cabling the racking was rock solid held down with between the, the tape and all of these other uh, attachment points. If you are interested in the details of all of this uh, equipment that I'm using and where I purchased it, then go into the description of this video below and the first link there is a link to a Google uh, sheet. It's a spreadsheet that has listed out all of the parts and components and where I got it from for this trailer project. On the back of the trailer, there was this ladder and I thought, you know, I should take advantage of this ladder being there for an additional attachment point just for if we're parked somewhere and there is a strong wind to help hold it down in the back area if need be. I don't think it's necessary, but I went ahead and ran Unistrut underneath the ladder and that just gives me some extra assurance that it'll hold tight. Now that the solar racking was there, I needed to get the wiring in place for the solar panels to come down into the trailer, of course. And the easiest way to do that is to utilize the refrigerator. Now keep in mind, as a separate part of this project, the refrigerator is being replaced. It's not a propane fridge anymore. It's a DC or AC, but a compressor type refrigerator. And so this vent is actually unneeded now. So um, the, the previous solar panels that had been installed uh, used this same method to get down into the trailer. And so I just drilled some additional holes and ran some wires down into the trailer. And then as you can see, the whole fridge cavity is basically a large conduit to get down in there. And also it's interesting here, you can see the cross section of what the roof is made out of with the foam sandwiched between the, uh, the Asdell fiberglass. And then you can't see them, but there are aluminum trusses in there as well. Um, after I got the wires in there, I filled the roof vent with uh, foam board insulation because once again, I don't need it as a vent and I wanted to improve the R value of the trailer in general. Now that I've done all that, I needed to get the solar panels onto the roof and they are very large and fairly heavy solar panels. They're about 63 pounds a piece. And so my lovely wife was helping me at one point just to make sure they didn't fall off while I went around to the top and, and pulled them up onto the top of the trailer and got them on the rack. And I found that they fit perfectly, which was you know, per my measurements, of course, prior to buying them. They look quite nice up there in my opinion, and I'm happy with how that turned out. Double checking, I, I wanted to make sure that the panels worked correctly, and so I checked the voltage of them. And then I had been planning on using the holes that come in the solar panels to bolt them down to the Unistrut, um, but I kind of overlooked the distance between the holes and exactly where the rails were installed. And it's fine because there wasn't a lot of room for having the racking moved sideways anyway. So I basically needed to drill additional holes for these uh, bolts to hold the solar panels down to the Unistrut. So I marked where the Unistrut was and then took that panel back down to the ground and drilled holes into it and took it back up there and it worked flawlessly using channel nuts. And so I marked on my measuring tape where I had drilled those holes and you know how far back from the edges of the solar panel. And then I just did the same thing to the additional four panels because there are five of these solar panels total and each panel is 530 watts. So after getting them all drilled out, I took them all up onto the roof, got them bolted down with that Unistrut, and this is the end result, which is beautiful and glorious in my opinion. I love the symmetrical uniformity of the panels with no obstructions, just, just solar panels soaking in the rays. And as you can see, looking at the very back, the solar panels end perfectly with the rear of the travel trailer itself. And on the front, the panels start right when the flat part of the trailer 
begins. So it's pretty much perfectly front to back matching the length of the trailer and side to side it is about three inches in from the edges of the trailer itself. Now the uni strut sticking out the back, I had left it longer for a while because I wanted to make sure I had enough and have the panels in place before cutting them off. Now this is what it looks like underneath the solar panels. And as you can see, there is a little bit less clearance than I thought there would be because I had been measuring from the roof of the trailer to the underside of the solar panels themselves. But the attachment points of the wires on the solar panels as well as this center box, it, I think it's a fuse box, um, they positioned in the center of the solar panel which aligned with several of the rooftop vents. So basically I, I wasn't able to go quite as high as I, I thought I would be able to with this, the vent cover, but that's fine, it, it still can move air just fine. Uh, the one thing that was compromised is the TV antenna. I had previously thought I would just barely have enough clearance to have the top of the TV antenna on and swivel underneath the panels, but because one of these solar panel fuse boxes uh, was there right above the uh, TV antenna, I basically had to take off the top of the TV antenna and just leave it off. Um, for what it's worth, we don't intend to watch TV when we're camping, and if we're gonna be watching shows, we'll be using the internet and Starlink and stuff, so we don't need these over the air antennas anywhere in our opinion, so we just left it off. Uh, otherwise, I could have replaced the Unistrut uh, risers and just made them a tiny bit taller and used the, the antenna, but I didn't care to do that. So this is what it looks like underneath the solar panels. This is what it looked like initially when I got it installed. And that was right before the winter hit. And so over the, the rest of the, the winter, and when snow would fall, I would go and push the snow off because I want to experiment with how much solar output I'm getting off of the panels in the winter. And if it snows, and because they're flat mounted, the snow will just stay there until it melts off. It doesn't slide off like it does on the roof of my house where they're slanted. And so I went ahead and just pushed off the snow each time it snowed. The solar production, it, I also was doing experiments with you know, how much uh, production you'd get with snow on the panels versus not, which obviously it's kind of a no-brainer, but it's still interesting to see the actual numbers and how big of a difference that is. And I will actually probably be making a video at some point about these experiments that I was doing over the course of the winter with, with snow on the panels and how much production I was getting on the winter solstice specifically, which is the shortest day of the year. And these panels being flat mounted, it's very suboptimal uh, compared to the angle of the sun. In any case, we then went on this trip down to Arizona and traveled for 2,000 miles and back and everything worked just fine. And uh, we had a great time. The trailer got real dirty and then I had to clean it. And now we are continuing to enjoy the trailer just here parked next to our house, charging our Tesla when we're not traveling. Otherwise, you know, we're obviously using the, the energy produced while we're traveling for you know, operating the trailer. I hope this has been helpful and informative. Subscribe to my channel if you're interested to see my next videos as I continue to document the process that I went through to retrofit my trailer to be fully electric. And thanks for watching.